I'm Bob. I like coffee. I also like to tell stories. So here at the Bobcast Coffee, it's time for a coffee break. So take a coffee break with me and pour yourself a cup of your favorite joke. By the time you're done with your coffee, you'll know something about me you really didn't need to know. But you'll have fun learning it. Just remember, my stories are true. For the most part. This episode was brought to you by JM Insurance. JM Insurance. Do you have business, personal, or life insurance yet? Contact JM Insurance Agency to understand the benefits of insuring against the unforeseen circumstances of life. We have over 40 years of experience in the business and will guide with the best probable choice for your situation. Call us for more information at 405-353-0140 or visit our website at jminsurance.agency. Good coffee. Coffee's always good. All right, welcome. And uh, let's see, we're looking at episode 57. So I hope you have a good cup of coffee with you. And nerves of steel, because we're talking about ghost stories today. So no new coffee. um, So no taste testing today, but we'll see what happens next time. 57, we're going to call this Thoughts on Haunted Houses in the Wonderful City of Pasadena. All right, in Pasadena, I started working for Space Bank Mini Storage probably somewhere around 1993 and worked for them until we moved to Oklahoma in 2008. So, a lot of stuff happened there. But let me tell you a little bit about what I have figured out history wise about Space Bank Mini Storage. Space Bank Mini Storage uh, is an old government facility that was bought by uh, the owners of the mini storage uh, straight from the government and they rehabbed it into a mini storage. It's very eclectic. It's very unique. You will never find another facility like it, ever. So, Bob comes in, gets a job, and slowly starts finding out stuff about it. Well, Space Bank was a Navy base. If you know anything about Pasadena, it does not butt up against the ocean. So it was actually considered a secret Navy base in Pasadena, California. And they did all sorts of uh, cool things. Uh, And now I can't be a hundred, I won't be a hundred percent, you know, certain on all this. But I do, um, I have been told that they did. development and testing of like torpedoes and tested them out in one of the lakes up in the uh, mountains there behind Pasadena. Uh, They did, um, I believe, dam buster bombs in World War II. They did like uh, pressure testing on uh, like Poseidon missiles. You say, that's a big missile. Were you going to pressure test it? Well, they had a giant pressure tank water pressure tank inside the giant tower on space bank so this when you're looking at a picture of of space bank and you see the big tower and it's painted yellow and has you know space bank on it uh that's actually all a giant water pressure tank uh it's not something you're going to remove nor is it any space that you're ever going to be able to use for anything else so it just sat there so a lot of lot of cool history. There were some other water tanks in the back. Um, people jokingly 
wanted to call them dolphin tanks. Absolutely no proof. Never heard a story, uh, except in jest, about the uh, tanks back there. Um, but it was, it was actually a pretty interesting place to, to be. One of the really cool facts about this facility, when it was a Navy base, is part of the Manhattan Project went through there. And you're thinking, oh, you know, atomic bombs in Pasadena. No, no. The Manhattan Project was broken up all over the country. Now, the main part, you know, was you know, out in the desert. But they, to keep secrecy, they would farm out little bits. Give us this thing. And here's the, you know, the directions on how to make it. So you wouldn't have any clue what you were making. You just made it to specifics and sent it back. And then that way, not everything would be compromised if one thing got compromised. Ah, pretty smart. So a very, very minute part of the project was there. And then, uh, of course, all the ghosts. Now, I was there for a long time, and a lot of it as an on-site manager, so I lived there. Did I ever see a ghost? No. But I had some great stories. You know me, I love to tell stories. And that's what this story today is about, is telling of ghost stories. One of my favorite Space Bank stories to tell when things are slow and people aren't doing much um, was about my rounds at night because I lived on site uh, I would go out and patrol the property at night just to make sure everything was going okay it was eight and a half acres and one third of it was mini storage one third of it was a uh, light industrial park and it was 24 hour and then one third of it was again mini mini storage in a in a big two-story building so what do you do? Well, you take a walk. And as long as everything's locked up and no one's causing any trouble on the property, you go right back to bed. Excellent. One night, I would, you know, go on my walk and I'd find a door open. Now, well, it's eight and a half acres and there are bunches of different buildings and multiple doors on each building and they all have to be locked up every night so I find one unlocked great I would walk the hall make sure no one was inside the building and then go lock it all up and life was good and I did that quite often every now and then I would find a door open and I would go in there and there's somebody getting into their storage or trying to get into somebody else's storage or whatever was happening and there'd be a lot of yelling and Bob with his command voice barking people out of the building believe it or not never got attacked and I never had to call the police so I figure that's a good thing one night I'm walking along doing my patrol now, let's start this off different. So one day, it's a slow, slow Saturday afternoon, and we've got this uh, customer of ours just kicked back in the, in the uh, main office, you know, checked it, you know, going through his mail or whatever he was doing. Uh, it happened. I mean, people would just come there and kill some time before they had to go do something else. It wasn't something that we um, were happy with, but it was also something we weren't going to kick anybody out. It was a big office. There was plenty of room. And we're standing around, and people are talking and telling stories. And this guy is saddles up to the to the counter there and and while we're telling our stories and he's listening and laughing and starts asking a few questions and wants to know if we have any ghost stories you know it's an old property well i got a story for you i'm bob i always have a story for you so here's my story i'm walking out like one two o'clock in the morning 
and I'm checking all the doors and on our biggest building the big two-story building with the five-story tower that says Space Bank Mini Storage on it. So it's it's the big one. And I'm 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 uh, go up to the main door and it's open. I'm like great. <sighs> Looked like it might have been propped open or just someone had left it cracked open. And I'm thinking great, this is a huge building. But I'm going to do what I, do what I got to do. So pull out my trusty flashlight I go in I start walking the hallways listening because usually you know when someone's trying to go through their storage or stuff it's the middle of the night they don't think anybody's there they normally aren't very quiet so I start walking I'm going downstairs and I'm looking down this hallway down this hallway go down the main hallway cut this way that way it's a maze in this building but I clear the whole first story and when I get back to the back of the building I start hearing voices. Ah, I got the people, right? So, you know, I look around and look around. They're not on the first floor. They got to be on the second floor. So um, I go back to the front of the building, go up the main stairs, and I start heading back toward the back of the building, checking all the hallways. I don't want to pass them and then have myself cut off from the main door. And I'm going through, and I, I hear the voices are getting louder. And they seem agitated and and they seem you know violent. And I'm walking through here and I'm listening. I'm like, it gets louder, but I can't find anybody. There are no lights on in any of the hallways. I don't see any flashlights except for mine. I, I we're you know, what's going on here? So I get all the way to the very back of the upstairs of this huge building, and I'm like the, the voices are loud, real loud, right where I'm standing, and I can't find anybody. Man, my brain is going crazy. There's uh, goosebumps going up and down my body. I mean, I am, I'm kind of freaking out just a little bit. And I'm like, this is nuts. And I go back down the hallway a little bit. You know, I'm double checking myself, and the voices start to fade off. So I turn around. <sighs> Okay, Bob, you can do this. And I walk back toward the back of the building, and the voices get louder until I'm standing right at the back door. There is a back door on the second story that went down a little flight of stairs, outside stairs. And uh, I'm standing right by that door, and this is where the voices are the loudest, like I am standing between two people fighting. And I'll tell you, yeah, I got a little freaked out. I said, I'm getting out of here. And instead of going all the way back through the building, I'm going to go out the back door and get out of this building. And I open up the back door and I step out onto that platform that's going to take me down the stairs. And I'm staring right at the 210 freeway, freeway wall. The building, the mini storage, or the Navy base, was there long before the 210 freeway. So when... They built the 210 freeway. They built it real close to the buildings. They can do that. We could not build buildings that close, but since we were there first, right? And so 10 feet away, straight in front of me, is the freeway wall. And there's a, a break. So they've got the big cement walls coming down, and they put breaks in between them every so often. So during an earthquake, they have a little room to flex without breaking. And I'm standing there staring straight out. And I see them. They're two drunk guys. <laughs> Obviously, they've had an accident on the 210 freeway in the middle of the night. And they're fighting right there. I can see them right in that crack as they're yelling and screaming. And it's honestly like they're standing right next to me. The, the noise comes right in that crack and is bouncing around all the, the metal and the cement that's right there. And I'm just like, oh, it's just idiots. And I went, idiots, go home, go to bed. And they stopped fighting. And they're looking around trying to figure out where the voice came from. Now it's their turn to look for the ghost. I laugh to myself. I turn around. I go back into the building. And I make sure everything's locked. I go all the way downstairs and go out the 
the front door, make sure it's locked, and I go back to bed, never think anything more of it. But it's the closest thing I've got to a real ghost story. All right, all my buddies are laughing in the office, and um, except for the ones that have heard that story too many times. Uh, it's, it's cute. It's a cute story. And the guy, the, the customer that's there, um, never could remember who he was. I don't have that kind of memory, like, you know, people that can pull out names from 30 years ago, stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't remember hardly any of the customers that we had there, but his name was Mike or something like that. Mike, Michael, Mitchell, you know, that's all I could ever remember, you know, and, and I had, you know, the regular, you know, cast of characters as far as my, uh, in, you know, the other employees were. So we had a good laugh, and he picks up all his stuff in a little bit, and he, he heads on home. And I don't think anything else about it. Now, this the story actually happened probably in the mid-90s. So let's say 94, 95, somewhere right in there. I'm telling retelling this story in the office probably around 97, 98. 2002, a book comes out, Haunted Houses of Pasadena, and Haunted Houses of Pasadena, hang on here, let me get all this right, Haunted Houses of Pasadena by Michael Curry, so Michael wrote this great story, now Michael, I come to find out now, became quite famous, which happened with several of our uh, our patrons there at, at Space Bank, actually got locally well-known or nationally well-known. This Michael, Michael got really famous as a paranormal investigator or, you know, psychic, you know, this in this genre. Uh, he has several books. He's got TV shows that he's done. Uh, pod, I guess podcasts or radio shows, stuff like that. But he is actually well known. And I found a copy of Haunted Houses. If I can get this to change. No, I can't. All right. But Haunted Houses of Pasadena. Uh, signed copies going for over $100. Pretty, pretty amazing. Good to go, Michael. But I'm reading the um, descriptor of this book. And it's talking about uh, Michael's investigative efforts reveal both benevolent and malevolent encounters with, with unseen forces who wreak havoc through the, this historic city. So it describes some of the stories in the book. You can visit the Gamble House, right? Uh, the Holly Street Bar and Grill, actually well known for being a haunted place. And then later it says, and visit a top secret naval base where ghosts wander as if mourning the deaths of the bombs they created that killed millions during World War II. So, what do we got here? A little bit of history of Space Bank Mini Storage and the fact that the... Uh, Manhattan Project did go through there in a very tiny spot. And Bob's fun story, and when you go through here, it talks about, the story talks about going through and hearing the voices and not being able to find the people. What the story doesn't tell is opening the back door and finding the drunk people fighting on the freeway. But it made a good story, obviously, for Michael. And... Um, once again, a story of Bob has gone worldwide in print, though I will never get the credit for it. Anywho, well, that's just a fun fact. How Bob has brushes with famous people. And, well, you know, I may never be famous, but at least I got coffee. And I got some fun stories. And I hope you enjoy them too. Remember, all your haunted stories and uh, drink coffee, 
tell your stories. Just have a good time. And don't forget, get back to work.